Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I welcome you all uh, to the seventh lecture of NPTEL MOOCs course titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So, this is uh, the first lecture of module 3. So, today we will talk about uh, the positive effects of stress and trauma first part uh, and we will have one more lecture on this aspect. Uh, so, before we talk about uh, today's lecture, uh, let me have a brief recap of the lecture 6. So, in the last lecture, uh, we talked about the relationship between stress and psychological disorders. Uh, so, we have been discussing in the last few lectures how stress is connected to uh, various diseases including physical diseases as well as you know, mental disorders. And uh, we try to understand that you know uh, stressful experiences, uh, particularly traumatic experiences or high intensity stressful experiences uh, can let lead to the development of psychological disorders such as you know schizophrenia, depression, anxiety disorder, acute stress disorder, post traumatic stress disorder. And uh, uh, in particular we have discussed uh, you know two uh, disorders which are connected uh, directly to the stressful experiences. One is uh, acute stress disorder and another is post traumatic stress disorder. So, we have discussed that uh, acute stress disorder you know primarily happens you know, when we experience a traumatic event or witness a traumatic event and uh, it may include various symptoms such as anxiety, re-experiencing of the symptoms avoidance of the symptoms, dissociative symptoms such as amnesia you know, and kind of feeling discontinuity between yourself and your environment and your mind. Uh, and generally this uh, acute stress disorder is a short term reaction to the trauma and it may last from 2 days to 4 weeks that is you know 28 days. And if these symptoms persist beyond 1 month then generally it has the potential to be diagnosed as post traumatic stress disorder. Then we have discussed you know post traumatic stress disorder which is more popularly known in the common parlance and uh, we have discussed you know that PTSD can happen as a long term effect of the trauma especially when symptoms persist for a long term uh, more than one month then it is generally considered as post traumatic stress disorder and in that context we have discussed that uh, post traumatic stress disorder is as an evolve from the combat history. So, from the world war 1 to world war 2 Vietnam war in so many wars have seen many war veterans after coming from the war or during the war uh, they experienced you know certain symptoms which were very common and people have been using the term shell shock, war neurosis, war fatigue etcetera etcetera uh, to understand these symptoms. Uh, but for the first time in 1980 in the DSM-3 American Psychiatric Association included PTSD as a formal diagnosis because of diverse movement uh, including war veterans movement, feminist movement and uh, holocaust survivors advocacy groups you know uh, the recommendation. So, so many you know different movements happened around the post traumatic stress disorder which led to the uh, diagnose uh, including of PTSD as a formal diagnosis uh, in DSM 3 in 1980. And then we have discussed the primary symptoms of uh, PTSD includes 4 categories 
uh, one is re-experiencing of the traumatic events again and again, uh, first cluster and uh, then uh, avoidance of the traumatic uh, stimuli related to the traumatic events. So, you try to avoid it as much as possible because it reminds you again and again. Uh, then the negative thoughts and feelings uh, that st starts or worsens after the traumatic events. Uh, this is another symptoms which was included uh, you know in the last DSM and last is hyper arousal. So, there is a physiological high uh, arousal startle reaction and you know people generally you know uh, become highly you know physiologically reactive and little bit of noise can disturb them. So, those four categories of symptoms when persist for more than one month generally it is uh, considered as uh, post traumatic stress disorder. Then we have also discussed that post traumatic stress disorder can have can be experienced by the children as well uh, particularly and uh, uh, but the problem with the children is you know the diagnosis of PTSD in children is very difficult and complicated you know primarily because you know children are not able to express those symptoms uh, which needs to be expressed. Uh, then uh, there are many additional uh, symptoms that children show which are not captured by you know uh, standardized scales and instrument that are used for diagnosis uh, which may include uh, separation anxiety you know psychosomatic diseases uh, psychosomatic symptoms uh, you know, loss of newly acquired you know developmental skills and so on. So, those makes it very complicated, but uh, there are many research that shows children also experiences PTSD symptoms. And the last we have discussed complex PTSD with the, which was kind of you know uh, originally formulated by a you know uh, a psychiatrist named uh, Judith Herman and uh, she was uh, kind of looking at specific traumatic events which are prolonged and repeat it like torture and uh, she kind of found that you know uh, then uh, normal PTSD diagnosis may not be enough in such cases and uh, many people kind of was also were also doing a lot of research in that direction and in the recent ICD-11 it was inclu included uh, as a formal diag uh, no, diagnosis uh, of psychological disorder. So, generally P complex PTSD happens after you know a repeated prolonged multiple traumatic events such as torture, sexual abuse, prisoner of war situation etcetera. So, complex PTSD includes some additional symptoms apart from PTSD symptoms such as you know uh, disturbances in self identity, you know uh, emotional dysregulation, difficulties in forming relationships and so on. Uh, so, these are the few things that we have discussed in the last lecture that today we will talk about uh, positive effects of stress and trauma. So, uh, mostly from the beginning of the uh, um, uh, lectures we have been mostly discussing about the negative aspects of stress and trauma uh, which is more commonly experienced by the people and it is more in our consciousness. Uh, but generally it is difficult to imagine and understand the positive effects of stress and trauma uh, because uh, people do not talk about it much and it is not uh, uh, generally visible uh, so commonly you know uh, in our life experiences. So, we will uh, discuss some of the concepts such as potential positive effects of stress, we will discuss in that context a concept called post traumatic growth. We will also talk about various dimensions of post traumatic growth, then uh, we will also talk about what is the relationship between post traumatic stress and post traumatic growth. We will also talk about what are the different types of traumatic event that can lead to post traumatic growth and we will also give some explanatory models to it. And in the next lecture we will talk about some other aspects of post traumatic growth. So, uh, stress and trauma may have certain positive effects which are not generally you know thought about, but uh, there are some positive effects uh, with especially the growth of positive psychology as a branch which focuses on the positive and bright side of the life particularly and how to you know nurture those positive qualities. 
uh, these things are coming and more and more research are being done in those areas. So, in the aspect in the context of stress and trauma also there are some possible positive impacts. Uh, so, in general broadly there can be three ways uh, in by which stress can have positive effects. One is uh, stressful events help us to uh, satisfy the need for stimulation and challenge. So, one thing uh, that human life constantly we want some kind of stimulation and challenge in our life and you know, this makes us makes our life more you know interesting and motivated to do something. So, if there are no stress you know probably you will be very much bored with your life and there will not be no will not be any stimulus and motivation to do something. So, many times stressful experiences does that function of stimulating you and gives you energy and the boost and the motivation to do something. Uh, and there may be some individual differences in that context that you know uh, some people may need more stimulation, some people may need little bit less stimulation, but at least we all need some kind of stimulation in terms of you know, uh, you know for motivate stimulation or motivation to do various things in our life. So, stress kinds of provide this that that stimulation. So, in that sense it is a uh, it does a positive function. The second uh, ways in which stress can you know influence positively is that stress can inoculate individuals for future stress. So, this is also very important inoculation is basically a term that is related to the vaccination idea where you know uh, what we do in vaccination is basically you know some you know weak strain or dead strains of virus or bacteria are introduced in your body which is not harmful. Uh, so, that body kinds of get exposed to those uh, uh, bacteria and virus and prepares itself for future threat. So, that you know bodies the immune system is ready. So, whenever in future such threat comes to your body you know body is prepared. So, this is how uh, the vaccines generally work. So, similarly stressful experiences when we experience them in our life you know today's stress it can inoculate us or kind of prepare us for the future stress. So, now we are prepared, we know how to deal with uh, difficulties and stresses of life. So, more we face, more we become uh, know, prepared and stronger to face uh, future you know, uh, possible such uh, stressful events. The third way in which a uh, stressful or traumatic event can uh, have a positive effect is uh, you know it can promote or facilitate psychological growth and self improvement. So, this is very important then you know, you know uh, it is the stressful circumstances and the challenges in life that stimulus psychology stimulates psychological growth and self improvement without challenges without difficulties without stressful circumstances we will not grow in our life. So, it provides that necessary you know uh, uh, stimulus for growth in life psychological growth and self improvement. So, this is very important and we will uh, particularly look at this third aspect in more detail using a concept called post traumatic growth. Now, before we talk about what is post traumatic growth or stress related growth, you know, let me uh, give you some items of a scale that was developed to measure post traumatic growth by Tedeschi and Calhoun in 1996. So, they asked people uh, that as a result of crisis or disaster or some kind of difficulties or crisis in life, how much of these statements are true for you in terms of they are kind of asking this kind of question. So, as a result of crisis or difficulties or adversities in your life, I have more compassion for others, I put more effort into my relationships. I developed new interests, I know better that I can handle difficulties, I discovered that I am stronger than I thought I was, I have a better understanding of spiritual matters, I can better appreciate each day. So, these are some of the sample items. So, if you can relate to these items in your own life or at least you have witnessed this kind of changes in other people's lives as a result of adversities or disasters in their life, you might have a sense of what post traumatic growth is all about. So, it is 
So basically certain positive changes that happens in the lives of people because of some crisis is basically called as post traumatic growth. And these are some of the you know typical items of such growth. Now post traumatic growth has been captured in various aphorisms by philosophers and you know uh, poets. For example, you know Nietzsche once said that you know that which does not kill us makes us stronger. So, this is an idea which is very commonly we can kind of relate with um, that you know facing adversities and difficulties actually makes us stronger or something like you know the pain of yesterday is the strength of today. So, people who experience pain in their past makes them stronger for the future events or uh, no, activities that they do. So, generally research shows just like post traumatic stress disorder we have discussed. So, there is a kind of disorder or negative functioning, negative symptoms after traumatic events. Similarly, it is also possible that after traumatic event there is some growth symptoms or positive functionings. Uh, which may not be very intuitive uh, in terms of understanding how it can happen. So, let us see what are the what, what are the research findings uh, or theoretical concepts related to that. So, uh, in addition to experiencing various negative symptoms of trauma and stress, which we have already discussed in elaborate details in the last few lectures, such as PTSD. Uh, many people also report various positive changes in their life as a result of facing traumatic events. So, it was uh, many people reported actually many positive changes in their life also. At least they have experienced or you know uh, many positive changes as a result of traumatic event. In addition to obviously uh, many po negative symptoms. So, these positive psychological changes that are experienced by the people as a result of struggle with the challenging life circumstances is known as post traumatic growth. So, po PTG or post traumatic growth is collectively you know uh, reflects those positive changes that happens uh, within people or some positive transformations that happens within people after experiencing traumatic events. And one thing is important that it is not a uh, PTG or post traumatic growth is not does not happen because of traumatic event, but it is uh, the struggle that people do in terms of relating uh, to the life situations after traumatic events. So, that struggle and you know facing and processing of information after the traumatic event is responsible for growth. So, trauma itself is not responsible, but how people deal with it, how they struggle with the new realities after the event uh, that is crucial for post traumatic growth to happen. So, according to the theorist at least. Uh, this term was post traumatic growth was introduced by these two person uh, they are um, Tedeschi and Calhoun in 1995 first in the literature of psychology. So, they kind of um, use the idea that suffering and distress can be possible source of positive change. So, as I have already discussed that uh, PTG or post traumatic growth is not a direct result of trauma, but rather related to how the individual struggles or you know manages those post traumatic life situations and his you know in, inner uh, psychological realities as a result of trauma. So, those management part plays more important role than the trauma itself. So, coping is necessary, but it is not sufficient for psychological growth. So, it is not just coping with traumatic event. Coping with the traumatic event may you may just go to normal level of functioning after coping and uh, you know. So, but PTG connotes the idea of some kind of positive transformation and person is not just returning to his baseline level of functioning before the event, but rather it is some kind of positive changes which was not there before the event. So, thriving or, or uh, you know, PTG represents more than return to equilibrium following challenge. So, you do not just return to your homeostatic level or equilibrium level just before the event that has happened. So, you return back. No, PTG connotes the idea of some kind of transformation which is positive. 
So, it is not just returning to the previous level of functioning. So, this is one important distinction that we need to understand uh, when we talk about just recovery or other concepts. So, we will be discussing little bit more some of the other related concepts. So, uh, research indicate that PTG experiences are fairly common and outnumbers the reports of psychiatric disorders. So, I mean research shows that you know it may look that post traumatic growth experience is extraordinary experience uh, which is experienced by few fortunate people. No, it is not true actually and research shows that it is very commonly experienced by ordinary people and uh, in fact you know um, some research indicates that approximately 30 to 90 percent of survivors of traumatic event report at least some positive changes you know uh, after traumatic event. So, it is fairly common not an extraordinary thing uh, that is experienced by only few people. So, according to Tedeschi and Calhoun in 2004, uh, they said for PTG following uh, some of the specific criteria that are important. One is uh, PTG calls attention to major traumatic disruption instead of common stressor. So, generally PTG happens after some major traumatic event which disrupts your life. So, transformation can always happen after some kind of major disruptions in your mental and physical world. Uh, which generally normal common stressors or daily hassles uh, may not do that, you know. You just you know some stressful event you experience and you just uh, cope with it and you know go on with your life. So, those kind of events generally do not stimulate post traumatic growth for post traumatic growth to happen generally some kind of major traumatic event and disruptions uh, generally stimulate post traumatic growth. So, uh, those who experience growth after trauma describe the process as transformative. So, one important idea with the post traumatic growth is that you know it is generally experienced as a transformative experience. So, something new have been added to your you know personality or in your you know psychological makeup which was not there before the event. So, com some kind of transformation happens. So, it is a transformative experience uh, not just coping experience. Third the growth is reported as an ongoing process uh, and not just you know uh, as a coping uh, you know responses or something. So, it could be an ongoing process as well as also as an outcome and this process uh, we will discuss more in the next lecture how this happens by using a model. Uh, so, there may be many uh, processes that may happen while you know leading to post traumatic growth. Fourth is the, dis uh, the, the disruptions of core beliefs that coexist with traumatic distress is required. So, core beliefs are generally disrupted after traumatic events and this disruption actually kind of uh, leads to newer belief system that comes up or you kind of reformulate your life based on some more core uh, newer core beliefs which are generally considered as post traumatic. So, disruptions of core beliefs also takes place or is kind of required uh, for PTG to happen. So, these are some of the basic ideas. Now, the concept of post traumatic growth is not a new concept uh, as you might have understood now you know uh, we all have heard about such concept from various stories, uh, various folklores, from various philosophers, from various religious ideas. Uh, so, the concept is a very old concept, but obviously it is a new thing in terms of academic research in the field of psychology. Uh, so, various you know religions, philosophies, folklores have been talking about this concept. Uh, we all hear stories of you know, you know great heroes you know, you know, you know children story, uh, you know kid stories and even you know the themes of movies and other things. Uh, so, the idea of hero is generally is the one who faces a lot of adversities and you know is able to grow out of it and becomes an living examples for people. So, these are all ideas related to post traumatic growth which are in build hero a hero does not come out of just you know living a leisure leisureful life, 
but rather you know faces lot of adversities in life so this is a common thing that we can uh, see in stories and movies and other things so these are all related to the idea of how people grow out of you know adversities and difficulties of life a uh, various philosophers have been talking about it you know many existential philosophers like viktor frankl you know and also nietzsche we, we have already talked about one of his i thought so they have been talking about this idea of how transformation can happens out of sufferings and difficulties of life uh, various religions have also been talking about it you know uh, almost all religion talks about the role of sufferings in you know purifying your heart and spiritual growth it is very important you know that you know when people suffers and face difficulties you know kind of spiritual growth happens it purifies one's heart to look at you know uh, uh, that life into more deeper aspects uh, uh particularly let's say the buddhism has a central idea of sufferings in their core ideas of religion where it is the fundamental idea is that life is suffering and in order to grow and liberate yourself you need to go beyond those sufferings so these ideas are inbuilt in all religions various philosophies stories and folklores uh, so this is not a new idea we all know about it uh, but more systematic academic research seems to be happening uh, in the field of psychology which is relatively re recent so another important thing when we talk about post traumatic growth is that you know uh, post traumatic growth does not mean the absence of distress so it doesn't mean a person who experiences post traumatic growth will appreciate trauma or distress or pain no it doesn't work like that so distress one may still experience the pain and distress of the trauma but ptg may happen side by side so both can co occur simultaneously so this is not like opposite ends of a spectrum and uh, post traumatic growth can be considered as an outcome as well as process so it depends on orientation of many res researchers so some consider it as a process it's a kind of positively a never ending process and some people consider it as an outcome that happens as a result of struggle and now let us briefly look into some of the related concepts you know there are many uh, such con concepts that are related to the growth or improvement in personalities uh, which seems to be very similar to the idea of post traumatic growth but there are certain differences between these ideas so some of the common such related terms i will just try to make differences with those terms and the ptg so uh, ptg is sometimes confused with some uh, related concepts uh, such as resilience recovery thriving and flourishing so these are some of the ideas which also connote some positive functionings in life uh, but how they are different from the post traumatic growth so let us see uh, how ptg is different from the concept of thriving now thriving is defined as a psychological state in which individuals experience both a sense of vitality and a sense of learning so a thriving life is basically kind of you know life which is expanding you know where you feel a sense of vitality in your life you are continuously moving and growing in life so your life is you know kind of expanding and you know growing life and constantly it's you know um, and uh, you know fully functioning life so thriving is also associated with growth so some kind of growth happens when you are thriving actually so growth is happening in your life in your personalities but it is more often understood as an everyday occurrence so thriving can happen you know in an everyday normal experiences of life and it is not normally linked with a traumatic event you know so it is not necessary that you know you need to have a traumatic event for thriving so thriving itself is a linked with general life experiences or general it can happen you know any time in your life uh but post traumatic growth is typically it it is an outcome of a traumatic event it is a typically it's an outcome of a traumatic event so ptg only happens after a traumatic event for thriving it is not necessary to have a traumatic event so this is the you uh, know basic difference between thriving and post traumatic growth 
similar to thriving another term which is used in the well being literature is called flourishing which is also very similar idea uh, mostly associated with the idea of well being uh, and uh, flourishing individuals are filled with emotional vitality functioning positively in their private and social realms of their life so positive functioning life is again you know is very similar to thriving but mostly used in the context of well being and uh, when you have emotional vitality and functioning you are you are functioning at a high level in your private as well as social life so again this is an idea which can happen without traumatic events or crisis in life um uh, which and you uh, know but ptg always happens as a response to traumatic event whereas you know thriving and flourishing uh, may or may not occur after a negative event so it is not necessarily connected with the negative or traumatic event another important thing is that post traumatic growth always connotes this idea of transformation that happens because of an event uh, but thriving and flourishing are not really uh, typically connected with the or this is not a um, prominent idea when we talk about thriving or flourishing also transformation is not a kind of major idea that is linked with thriving and you know flourishing life but ptg it is transformation is a core idea another term that is uh, generally confused with ptg is resilience uh, this is uh, mo mostly people get confused with the difference between resilience and post traumatic growth and recovery uh ptg is different from resilience the concept of resilience so resilience is generally is the is an ability to bounce back from bounce back and go on with the life after a hardship so after some difficulties in your life the people with high resiliency are able to bounce back very soon from those difficulties of life and start functioning normally in their life so this ability to bounce back and start functioning after a difficulties or hardship of life is called as resilience so it's more like an ability that people have some people are highly resilient some people are not so resilient so people with less resilience will take more time to come back to their normal functioning after a hardship people with high resilience will are more likely to bounce back immediately after the difficulties of life and start functioning so uh, resilience is mostly about getting or returning back to your baseline level of functioning after the hardship so you come back to your previous level of functioning uh, so there is no idea of transformation here so but resilience also happens is connected with the idea of traumatic event ptg on the other hand is not about just returning to your baseline before the traumatic event but rather you experience an improvement or a transformation or positive transformation that is deeply profound and significant for the concerned person so you kind of not just come back again to their baseline functioning but you kind of go above that in terms of functioning in certain dimensions of life so it is uh, you know kind of above functioning of the baseline level whereas in resilience you come back to your baseline level so resilience can be seen to differ from uh, ptg in that it emphasizes stability in the context of trauma so you become stable and you maintain your homeostasis after the trauma so resilience is about that rather than a trajectory of increased positive functioning in ptg it is more about increased positive functioning uh, which is kind of you know an added aspect to your personality after a traumatic event now another idea the idea of recovery is again going back to the baseline functioning and it is more like a process recovery is more like a process so you uh, take some time to recover from certain problems of your life and you go back to your baseline level resilience is more like an ability that more the you know that that quality helps you to bounce back so these are some of the differences between uh, post traumatic growth and some of the related concepts which are connot some positive functionings also and sometimes you know they are uh, confused so these are some of the basic differences so ptg is always discussed in the context of 
traumatic event, changes that happens after traumatic event and mostly positive changes. So, this uh, one of the uh, diagram that generally uh, by which we can kind of understand are this different changes that happens after a uh, traumatic event in life. So, in the trauma literature generally you know we have you know uh, uh, way of showing this different changes. So, if you show you a kind of graph. So, let us say here we are considering time passage of time here it is level of functioning so what is the level of functioning in one axis and as the time passes after a traumatic event what happens to your level so level of functioning based on that we can see some of the differences so let's say this is your normal level of functioning and at this point some traumatic event happens or some adversity happens then uh, immediately your functioning goes down and some people may completely succumb to the this we can call as succumb So, we can uh, by using this diagram uh, or this graph we can understand uh, you know, the, the, the different levels of functioning that may happen after a traumatic event. So, let us say after a traumatic event some people you know immediately for most of the people you know the functioning level goes down we are not able to deal with the life difficulties and we are not able to uh, perform our daily functioning. So, it goes down some people completely succumb to it and get into various disorders you know like PTSD and many other psychological disorders probably depression and other anxiety disorders. So, you completely succumb to the difficulties of life and not able to come out it. Uh, some people uh, they kind of do not go too much into the disorder, but slowly slowly kind of they survive with, but still if the functioning level is not up to that mark with some impairment they kind of survive, but not into that clinical disorder type. Uh, some people bounce back to the previous functioning which was their normal functioning they come back to it which we called as resilience as an individual ability and uh, recovery as a process we have discussed so people recover to their original level of uh, functioning so for some people uh, you know this may stimulate functioning which is above normal functioning so this one is uh, what we are called calling as PTG or thriving life experiences. So, here the person is functioning at above the normal which was uh, functioning which is more than which was there before the traumatic event in certain dimension obviously it may not be in all dimensions, but in certain dimensions. So, such positive changes and transformation uh, which is kind of functioning above normal functioning could be called as post traumatic growth or thriving or flourishing experiences. Now, a research shows that post traumatic growth experiences can happen in various dimensions of life. It is not just an unidimensional thing, 
but people report uh, growth in many dimensions of life. And uh, the research mostly shows that people uh, experience PTG in five dimensions typically. So, first dimension is called as an increased appreciation for life in general. Now, this could look again counterintuitive and you know, paradoxical in the sense that how can after traumatic event somebody appreciate life in general. Uh, it looks counterintuitive, but if you kind of think a little bit, especially you know, uh, if some people have experienced you know, near death experiences such as you know, accidents and survived a chronic disease such as cancer, then people understand the value of life they no longer take life for granted because they kind of understood that how fragile life is and it can go at any moment. So, because of this experience of such traumatic events where almost they kind of died and they come back to life, they appreciate life more in general as compared to what they used to do it before the event because mostly people take life for granted, but some traumatic events sometimes you know makes you realize that it is very fragile and you cannot take it for granted. So, people kind of start appreciating life in more, more general in terms of let us say they will find more joys in small things of life, they will value small things of life like you know the moments with the people they are close to each other, they will cherish those moments more because you know they give more meaning in their life. and increases the value of their life, feelings of being lucky to kind of survive. Uh, these are some of the things that are commonly reported or experienced by people and a research also shows that you know in many instances people uh, kind of appreciation for life increases after a traumatic event, primarily because you know they see the values of life, the fragility of life and need to cherish life more they see all these important things more from there after the traumatic event. So, this could be experienced as a growth dimension. Uh, another dimension where people kind of report uh, post traumatic growth is more intimate and meaningful relationships with others. Now, it is in the context of traumatic event that the relationships or social support comes into foreground or become more significant in life. It is only when we face difficulties we take support from other people. We understand the value of friendship and relationship more when we are in difficulties or when we are facing traumatic events. So, the value of relationship we learn more when we face difficulties and we also learn who are our real close friends or who are fake friends when difficulties happens in your life. Otherwise, it is difficult to understand you know. Uh, who are kind of really close to you, who are concerned for you and who are kind of more superficial and fake relationships. So, traumatic events and adversities of life, you know, teaches you the importance and the significance of meaning in life or meaningful relationships. Uh, you realize the importance of relationship because when somebody helps you in your difficulties, you understand how important uh, the social support and the uh, relationships with other is and uh, so much of difficulties and stress is relieved simply because you know somebody is there to help you. Uh, you find the real friends who are real friends and many people you know it they develop more compassion and sense of empathy after the traumatic event or difficulties of life simply because when you experience first hand the difficulties and problems and traumatic events you develop more compassion or empathy for people who are undergoing similar difficulties and problems in their life. Now, you can kind of relate with their life. So, you your sense of compassion and empathy also increases. So, all this can be seen as a kind of new changes in the person and as a dimension of post traumatic growth. The third domain uh, in the post traumatic growth generally people report is sense of personal strength. So, this is obviously the most core dimension that comes to our mind when we talk about you know surviving the people who survive traumatic event or difficulties of life that they develop a sense of personal strength which they did not realize before the event. So, many people when it is the uh, hardship that happens in their life 
uh, when they go through or navigate through those hardship, they realize their hidden potential capabilities, which was not earlier realized simply because it was not needed at that time. But when hardship happens, you need more strengths, more skills, more potentials, which are there within you kind of are realized and utilized at that moment. And you many time come, you know, realize for the first time that you can do many things that you were not thought capable of not doing before the event. So, something happens and suddenly let us say you need to take a new job and businesses, which earlier you thought I will not be able to handle those pressures, but now you can easily do it after a certain crisis in your life. So, the new role that you take in terms of, you know, managing a business, family business maybe. So, you realize that you can do so many things which you are not able to realize before that. So, increased ability to deal and handle things, all these things can be expressed as a dimension of uh, post traumatic growth. The fourth uh, dimension which is generally reported by people is uh, new possibilities for one's life. Many people also after traumatic event, you know, they develop new possibilities in their life in terms of taking new paths and careers in their life. So, many people, you know, after an event, you know, they, there is a complete shift in their pathways of life, uh, you know, or they will take on new careers or new you know, assignments in their life, which they never thought of doing it before the event. For example, you know, many people who survive traumatic event, you know, let us say cancer, uh, they will get involved into the, you know, helping people with the cancer or similar patients or some people who survive sex, sex trafficking, when they survive, they come out and they, you know, you know, start an NGO and start helping people who are, you know, uh, you know suffering or who are kind of victims of uh, similar situations such as sex trafficking. So, they kind of make a new mission in their life to help people who are similar to them simply because of their first hand experiences. So, these are, this is called as new possibilities in life. You would see newer pathways and newer careers or newer missions of your life or meaning of your life in a completely new ways and you change your life trajectories in a very different way. So, such kind of you know, dramatic changes may also happen after traumatic events. And the fifth dimension which people generally report after traumatic event is called as spiritual or existential growth. So, it is only during the time of trauma that people ask deeper questions of life such as what is the meaning of life, why it is happening to me, what is the meaning of all this. People become more reflective and more uh, you know, deeper in terms of asking or engaging with existential questions only when some adversity happens. Generally, when we are happy, we do not ask this kind of deeper spiritual question. But adversity and uh, difficulties in life, sufferings in life sometimes stimulate uh, such kind of questionings uh, with greater engagement with the existential aspect of life and many people develop newer insights with the existential thing and they kind of find new meaning in life and they may see the fragility of life, uselessness of superficial life and develop newer spiritual growth in their life. For example, you know, uh, it was very evident, you know, uh, you know, some people this happens very dramatically and drastically. One common uh, story which is most of us are, you know, very um, know about is, you know, life of Gautam Buddha, when he, exp he has witnessed some problems or, you know, sufferings of human life in terms of death, in terms of disease, you know, in terms of old age. Uh, just few witnessing of few sufferings of life was enough you know, for him to leave his kingdom and you know, search for spiritual enlightenment. So, it could happen so dramatically to in some people's life. It may happen less dramatically for other people's, uh, but many times you know such adversities and uh, you know, uh, difficulties stimulate spiritual growth or existential growth, where you engage with more deeper questions of life. So, these are some of the you know uh, dimensions of post traumatic growth that are generally research indicated that people report after traumatic events. Now, uh, we will see briefly what is the relationship between post traumatic stress and post traumatic growth. So, we have discussed post traumatic stress and disorder you know elaborately in the last few lectures. 
uh, what is the relationship with post traumatic stress and growth so research shows that the relationship is very complex actually uh, but theoretical model which we'll discuss in the next class of tedeschi and colhoun they said that some post traumatic growth and post traumatic stress are not opposite spectrum opposite you know dimensions of a uh, spectrum but rather you know both coexist together and some level of post traumatic stress is actually required for ptg to happen so without the distress ptg will not happen so it's kind of both kinds of remain simultaneously and one is required for other actually so this was the kind of theoretical proposition and many research found similar uh, findings in in line with that proposition uh, some studies for example showed you know greater post traumatic stress is associated with greater post traumatic growth so the higher the stress is uh, more likely that ptg is going to happen some showed some uh, you know uh, exception uh, other exceptional findings such as you know u shaped relationship some findings reported where highest level of growth happened at moderate level of stress uh some recent longitudinal studies have found uh, that that there is a positive relationship uh, between post traumatic stress and post traumatic growth over time uh, such that initial levels and increase in post traumatic stress predicted increase in post traumatic growth so so actually uh, the initially at least at the initial level higher level of post traumatic stress actually predicted uh, higher post traumatic growth so at least longitudinal studies which are more reliable in terms of seeing the changes in people indicates that now uh, studies have shown that post traumatic growth can happen after you know diverse traumatic event various types of traumatic event and it is a common experience it's not an extraordinary experience and it has been generally claimed that the nature of event itself is not that important but for post traumatic growth but the way an individual experiences it deals with it is more important we have already talked about it so struggling part is more important so research has indicated that ptg resulting from diverse traumatic experiences ptg have been reported by people for example after diverse personal traumatic ex experiences uh, such as you know bereavement experiences loss of loved one death of loved one uh, diverse all these experiences also led to uh, uh, ptg in different dimensions various medical problems also stimulated ptg such as cancer hiv and so many other medical diseases uh, uh, the studies on those patients also showed that such patients also report uh, many P, uh, the ptg in you uh, know diverse dimensions uh, ptg has also been reported by you know the victims of various interpersonal violations such as rape and other form of sexual assault also stimulated some growth in cert certain dimensions uh, ptg has also been reported by after pro community level trauma such as natural disasters and terrorist activities or terrorism ptg has also been reported after various you know work related or job related traumatic events however uh, surprisingly you know ptg has not been done uh, uh, research has not been much done on in the, in the context of work and organizational life a uh, very few studies have been conducted however a small body of research explored ptg in certain job context which are vulnerable uh, to traumatic events uh, for example there are some jobs which are inherently traumatic for example you know defense job related to defense such as military police you know they frequently encounter traumatic events or at least witness traumatic events people doing emergency services such as you know firefighters etc people who are doing disaster and rescue work so these are the inherently these these are inherently traumatic jobs jobs which requires you to experience experience traumatic events very frequently or at least witness traumatic events 
and uh, people have been uh, many uh, no, research in this inherently traumatic job and the people involved in such jobs also shows that PTG can happen in all these inherently traumatic jobs also. So, this research shows that although doing such work often leads to post traumatic stress, let us remember that post traumatic stress and disorder happens also in all these situations and traumatic events and jobs but PTG can happen side by side also. And we should understand that people with post traumatic growth uh, when experienced uh, post traumatic growth people do not appreciate trauma. No? Uh, it is more like newer insights that develop as a result of struggling with it, but still trauma is painful and difficult and you know distressing for people even after experiencing post traumatic growth. Uh, Research also shows that you know uh, people report post traumatic growth after secondary trauma also. Secondary trauma basically means you know uh, traumatic events that are ex witnessed by people you know after when we witness traumatic event after you know uh, rather than directly experiencing them or at least we deal with people who have experienced uh, traumatic events. So, those are called vicarious trauma or secondary trauma. Uh, these are part of uh, various regular job professions uh, which are trauma traumatizing because it involves supporting others who have been traumatized. So, supporting others who are traumatized. So, you kind of witness traumatic events and such witnessing or vicarious traumatic experience can also lead to post traumatic growth. So, a research indicate a post traumatic growth among various health professionals such as labor and delivery nurse, psychotherapist, social workers interpreters, clergy and funeral directors. So, these are all jobs that requires you to witness traumatic events and people have been also reported post traumatic growth in all this uh, secondary trauma related work also. So, in uh, many of these cases uh, PTG is linked to change and growth that actually they witness in their clients. Mostly it happens as a witnessing phenomena. So, you see people how they are struggling with their life and how they grow out of it. When you witness such kind of uh, post traumatic growth experiences in others or spe specifically your clients, you also kinds of you know develop or a, it prompts you or stimulates in you some changes or positive changes. So, you see a new appreciation of what is possible in life in terms of the difference that you are facilitating in the lives of people. Uh, in some cases it may prompt a spiritual broadening. So, by seeing changes in the lives of people or positive changes in the lives of people, especially in the clients that you are directly involved with, uh, can promote post traumatic growth in the people after witnessing them also. In most of these cases research shows that empathic engagement with the clients facilitates secondary PTG. So, especially the people who are highly empathetic and engaged with their clients. Uh, so, PTG is more likely to happen for people who are more engaged. So, thus witnessing uh, PTG in others can itself is a positively transformative experience. So, with this uh, we will uh, end today's lecture and tomorrow we will talk about some other especially uh, the theoretical understanding of post traumatic growth how PTG happens, what is the process of it, what are the explanations for it. So, we will try to understand more about the mechanisms of post traumatic growth in the next lecture. So, with this uh, I will end today's lecture. Thank you.